Well, you all know this lady. Uh, yes, yes. The sprint beside the man. Not behind anymore, but beside. Uh, through all this controversy, have you ever found yourselves at home fighting, honestly? No. No, uh -uh. not about anything important. We fight about what movie we want to see. Yeah. You know. This is the only movie we're going to see for a month, and you're going to make me see this crazy Cheap Thrills movie? You want to go see <laughs> Lethal Weapon 3 when we've got all these other movies on? That's the kind of stuff we fight about. Because, you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, okay, I, it's hard to, to think that you never at some point said, who is Jennifer? You know, who the hell is she? And it's like, you know, I mean... I, I know who she is. I mean, I know, I know who she is. And you know what her problem is? I, she's got lots of problems. Yeah. <laughs> Through all the pressure and things you've been through, have you ever thought about quitting? Oh. Really? No. You know, I would have quit if I just wanted to live in the White House or go to Camp David on the weekends. But if that were the choice, I would gladly stay home where I am with the job I've got and the life I've got. It's a lot better life in many ways on a much more human scale. I got into this race because I thought this country was going down the tubes and we ought to change it. And I stayed in it because I thought I could be a force for change. And I wanted the voters to make up their mind. If the voters say, hey, we think some other person be a better president, I will go home a happy man to the life that I've got. It's a wonderful life. But I would have been a gutless wonder to quit over things I thought were unfair and insubstantial in the face of the convictions that I have about what we ought to do to change the country. So no, I never thought about quitting. This country doesn't need a quitter. And the licks that I've taken are nothing compared to the licks most Americans take. Look at what those people in South Central L.A. are going through. That's a lot tougher than a few days of bad publicity. I mean, if you can't take a few licks, you got no business being president. It's a tough job. you got to be a tough guy. Yeah. Um, wow. Have you kind of, like, and, and this is something that I heard a political analyst talk of, talking about recently. Um, he said you kind of were, I use the word chilling out. He said you were pulling back a little bit. You've been instructed not to say as much or be as outspoken. Yeah. No? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I've heard that, but I never know who says it. I think it's wishful thinking on the part of some people. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yes. I want to tell you something. I thought what you did the night after the L.A. riots was the way television ought to be. I was so oh, here, impressed. Yeah. yeah. It was a wonderful it was, show. It was not a... watched it all. I mean, it, it was, not only a, it was not only a great show, it was honest, and it gave people a chance to connect with each other, what you and Bill were talking about uh, earlier. Uh, and it used television in a positive way, not just reporting from a distance, not just pointing fingers, but involving people and letting those of us who were at home watching feel that, you know, we had some role, we had some say, too. I was real pleased. You know, um, see, we gotta, we gotta stay involved every day. After the fires burn out, we can't allow our involvement to burn out. Um, a few weeks before the riots, I had been on the Hill, um, invited by Lewis Stokes to talk about gangs and violence. I'm heavily involved in a lot of those issues. Um, what do we do about the gangs? And what do we do about the violence in our inner cities, the black-on-black -black crime? Um, how do we stop it? Well, if there were a simple answer, it would be done already. Mm -hmm. I think you got to start with a safe streets strategy. The cities that are safer are those that have neighborhood policing, where the people that live in neighborhoods look at the police as their friends. They see them every day. The police know the kids that are in trouble or about to be. They work together to keep harmony and peace. We need to help those policemen by giving those kids something else to do, more one-on-one -on -one relations with successful adults. And when they do get in trouble, Instead of sending them off to jail the first time, they ought to be kept in community boot camps where they can do community service work, have discipline and drug treatment and education. And I think we ought to pass the Brady Bill and do some other things to get some of these guns off the street, too, and out of the hands of these kids. So you need a safe street. Stay. Then you've got to have something for the kids to say yes to. You gotta, everybody wants to be in a gang. I mean, everybody hears it. If you go to the, your church, it's mm -hmm. a gang. It's just a yeah. good gang. Yeah. Makes you feel good to be there on Sunday, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We are social animals. We have to be part of something bigger than ourselves. So you got to take those gangs and give them some ways to be winners as gangs or give people good gangs to be a part of. 
We've got to give these kids something to say yes to. The L.A. Conservation Corps ought to be a national model, and it ought to be dramatically expanded for young people to work in ways that get them out of their own lives and their problems and get them into working with other people and doing good things. Those are the kinds of things we've got to do. We've got to change lives from the outside in and from the inside out. And there's no simple strategy. The government can do some things, but people on the streets have to do others. Yeah. I, the reason I ask you questions like this, because uh, these, these aren't just black questions. Mr. Crime, Mr. Frustration own cars now. And they'll be coming to the suburbs real soon. Oh, That's why we have to solve the inner city problem. I was in Macomb County, Michigan, which is virtually all white, outside Detroit. All the white folks went out there. That's the home of the Reagan Democrats. You know, the Democratic Party left me. I'm tough and conservative now. I was there a couple of days after a 15-year-old white boy had shot another one in the schools. Yeah. This is not just about race. It's about ethics and education and economics. And it's about kids being divorced from the life we wanted to live. There's all these disconnections. It's like people's circuits have shorted out. And people like you, at least you're reaching out and trying to touch them again. And what you gotta do is to empower people like all of the rest of us, people that aren't famous or rich, but still have incredible power to touch other people's lives. Yeah. Um, it's all of our problems. I, I don't have a lot of time left, but Marla, just give me a couple seconds. I'm gonna let the lady close this segment. Tell young America and anybody in America who's watching why they should vote for this man. Because he's got the right combination of a great heart and a great mind, and he understands what's at stake in this country. And if he were not convinced that we could do better and that he could inspire people, particularly young people, to feel good about themselves and to be committed again to this country, he wouldn't be in this race. But he is and he can. And that's what we need more than anything, to get America back on the right track. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for, but vote for somebody. This is Hillary. This is Bill. The Clinton family.